Hey, welcome back to a new video. If you would, take your Bible to Proverbs 9. I'm going to be preaching there today. Yes, preaching. We're going to be doing a little bit something different today. And I actually want to start making this a regular thing, as I mentioned in my last video. Um, so yeah, Proverbs 9. I'm using the King James Version. If you're not using it, you're going to get pretty confused. Um, with or without reading, without, with or without me reading the King James Version, but because other versions are pretty confusing. But if you would, use the King James Version. Um, and this, the title of the sermon is Dinner Decisions. Dinner Decisions. It's a pretty funny name, but it's a very serious decision for we're going to make in our lives. Where we're going to eat, who we're going to hang out with. Dinner Decisions. Uh, if you would, Proverbs 9. We're going to be reading a couple verses here, starting in verse 1. Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath, wing she hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. Then we're going to skip down to verse 13 here. It says, A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers to go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stone walls are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. And a little parenthesis by Solomon here, verse 18, But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray you bless this message, and I pray you use it any way that it could be used. Uh, cleanse me of sin, enter me of self, and fill me with your spirit. And um, I just pray that today we'd be able to get something interesting out of the Bible that we could take with us for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Firstly, we're going to be looking at wisdom in verse 1 through 6. Firstly, we're going to be looking at, we're, firstly, we're going to be looking at who is she? Who is she? Verse 1. Wisdom hath built her house, she hath hewn her seven pillars. We see she goes through. We never really see a description of wisdom because wisdom is showing who she is by what she's doing. She's busy. She's helping her family out. She's preparing a meal. You know, she's, she's busy. She's not sitting around lazily like foolishness is later on in the chapter. She, she's busy. And we see she, she's uh, killing beasts. She's mingling wine. She's furnishing a table. She's getting a meal ready. She's preparing dinner for the family and maybe some special guests. And she's working hard. She's, we don't see a description of her personality because we see her personality in display here as she's working hard. Secondly, what is she doing? Well, wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She has sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the high places of the city. She's busy. What is she doing? Seven things, which is interesting. Uh, but she's busy. She, she's, she's getting dinner ready, as I already said. She, she's calling. She's calling for you. She's calling to anybody who will hear her. And where is she calling? Well, the high places of the city, as we can see in verse 3. She's actively calling you for you in the high places. She's gone out of her way. Clearly, she's, she doesn't live there, as we can see later on by foolishness. Foolishness is already there. She's got to go out of her way. She's got to get out of her house. She's got to go up the high places. She's got to probably go up some inclines, maybe some steeper inclines. At least she's got to go uphill at least a little bit because it's the high places. And she's getting where people are at. And she's saying, I can help you. I have the answer. I have dinner ready. Come on. She's calling people, um, you know, and probably more elegant than that, but, you know, it's just putting a picture in your mind, you know, you can see wisdom, you know, she's modest, you know, she's well-dressed, she's beautiful, she's up here on the high places of the city, she's, she's trying to get people to come and eat with her and her family. Then we see, why is she calling? Well, verse 6, forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. We see that she's calling because she wants to help you. She doesn't want you to end up with the other lady. You know, we see, we, I can see in my mind, wisdom is here. She's calling. She's standing up. She's, she's moving around. She's trying to get people to listen. We can see Foolish. She's just calling out. Well, we'll get to that later. But we can see, you know, she's trying to get people, people, people away from wisdom, foolishness. She's trying to help you. She doesn't want you to fail in your life. She wants you to be successful. She wants to feed you. She wants to help you. She wants you to go on the right path and choose the right decisions. So why is she calling? She wants to help you. Not so for point two, foolishness. Verse 13 through 18. Firstly, who is she? Verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. We already see. She's not wisdom. Wisdom is busy. The Bible doesn't even bother to give us an explanation because we can see who she is through what she's doing. Foolishness, on the other hand, is too busy sitting there. She's, she's just sitting there. It tells us she's loud. She's loud, as we can see, clamorous, and she is simple and knoweth nothing. She does, she's loud, and she doesn't even have anything good to say bunch of hot air with no real substance to what she's saying. She's 
doesn't know what she's saying. She's just talking. She's trying to get your attention. What is she doing? Well, she sit, she sits at the door of her house on a high on a seat in the high places of the city. That's interesting. She says she has a seat. She has a little spot she can sit there. She has a house there. She has a house. Wisdom has to come out of her way. Wisdom already is. She's already set herself up there. You know, she's been placed there. She's gotten a house there. And she's on a seat. She's sitting down too. She's not. She's wisdom's really making an effort. What foolishness is sitting there? Where is she on the high places of the city at her house? And something interesting is she's she has a house in the high places of the city. A house. She's she's dwelling there. Wisdom has to come out of her way. And that's so, so accurate about our society and many societies nowadays. You know, foolishness is just so exalted. You know, next to this video, if you're watching this on YouTube, you might see prank videos. You know. You know, there's just that kind of stuff is popular on YouTube, but then not even just that. You know, I'm just picking at various people on YouTube. Also, you know, comedians nowadays. There's so many, you know, and there's a good time, there's there's time for jokes, there's time for laughter, but comedians, so many comedians nowadays, they're just foolish, they're just saying stupid things and it gets people to laugh because we're foolish people. Humans are foolish, and especially here in America now, we're becoming fools, you know, we're, we're going away from God, you know, and cartoons, kids' cartoons, kids' movies, they're just polluting the kids, you know, what was, you know, used to be slapstick and now it's just plain bodily functions are, are the joke, that's all there is. Watch a kids' movie, you'll hear plenty of stupid jokes like that. I'm not just picking at people. I'm serious here. We, there's a, there's a, there's a foolishness that we have in our society now. It's just childish, you know. Superhero movies just be for kids. Now we've got adults and everybody watching them, you know. That that foolishness. That's this is not real. It's it's fake and people get so into them. But you know, they used to be for kids and now it's you know we've seen this childish kind of like, oh I, everything's about me and you know like a toddlerish this this viewpoint of life spread through everybody now. Even old people are selfish. Many of them. So where is she? She's in a high place, unfortunately. And we put her there. Why is she calling? Verse 18. So large and sweet and buddy and secret is pleasant. She's got the same motives as wisdom. She just wants you to have a good life. She wants you to, you know, just come come on, come eat some food with me. You know, have some bread and some water. You know. But Solomon adds a parenthesis. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. She's trying to trick you. She is the alternative to wisdom, and so many people follow her because... Wisdom is the straight and narrow. Foolishness is the broad way that leads to destruction. That's ultimately what these two women just represent. Fo wisdom represents God. Foolishness represents the world. What are you going to follow? The temporal thing now. You know, I can see, you know, she's got a house there. Everything's already right next to her. She's on the doorstep. So all you got to do is say, oh, yeah, I'll come. And she'll say, all right, come on in. She'll maybe get up and maybe she'll slide across the floor if she's that, if she's that lazy. But, you know, sh she'll, she'll say, yeah, come on in. She'll stand up and she'll say, come on into my house. It's right here. You know, the table's right over there. Come on in. Just just come on. Come, on. come get some bread. Come get, come get some water. Wisdom doesn't have that. She had to come up here. So people people look at this and say, well, you know, the bread and the water's right there. I, I can get this immediate, this satisfaction right here. Wisdom has got a feast at her house, people. You know, we see nowadays, and, and applying this to real life, you know, applying this to our lives, you know, God's got a feast in heaven. He's got a, got a manifold of just blessings and obeying him is going to bring those now and for eternity if we serve god we'll have those blessings for eternity and we say oh well that's kind of hard because i've got to walk down the street and down there to wisdom's house i'm just going to go with foolishness she's right here i can just walk into her house that's what the world is choosing that's what many people are choosing we need to focus we need to think well hold on now and it's, and it's interesting because it says you know verse two she has killed her beast she's got meat Look at the wine. She's got wine. She's got grape juice. You know, furniture table. She's she's got an actual table, all this set up, furnished. You know, I'm thinking of Thanksgiving. I'm thinking of Christmas time. You know, I'm thinking of family and friends. And you got nice. You know, for Thanksgiving in her house, we'll have a nice tablecloth. You know, this nice leaf pattern from what I can remember. She's furnished it. She's got that going on. She's got probably got candles. You know, she's got nice. She's got all her forks and spoons and her napkins all nice and set up. And we see. You know, you got all that waiting for you. All you got to do is follow her and, and just do a little extra work for so many more. So, uh, real food. Or you've got, you know, foolishness here. She's probably got a dumpy little, little, you know, wood table. It's not very well built. Probably the poor and cheaper carpenter did it because she's lazy. She doesn't want to have to spend much money. You know, and when we see on the table, we see just sitting there right in the middle, just a, a glass of water and some bread. That's what it's saying. So, so wires are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. You know, it might be okay bread. It might, it might not be terrible bread. But compared to the feast that's just down the street that just takes a little more work 
some just a little bit of work and that's really ultimately the Christian life is not much work compared to what it could be we could, we could have to work for our salvation and we don't and God asked give me 70 years or 80 years you know and I will bless you eternally forever forever just think that you know it's hard as a human to even to even picture forever but forever God will bless you forever or you can go ahead and take the bread and water now you know, behind this prize door is eternal blessings. All you got to do is walk over and pull it open. Or there's a table right here with bread and water. You can just take it off right now. That's what we're doing in our lives. When we say, I don't want to read the Bible. I'm going to watch TV. When we say, you know, I, I could give that person the track. Or I could just, you know, forget about it and walk away. We're taking the easy option. What is that going to give us? We're going to end up with bread and water. You know, and ultimately, hell or heaven. The world or God. Who are you going to choose? Who are you going to choose? You know, I can see wisdom there standing next to, to foolishness. You know, forsake the fools should live. Follow me for something that's eternal, for something that lasts, for something that's real. And we see, you know, foolishness on the, on her little step there. Maybe she's got her legs crossed. She might be picking at a nail. She's, come on in, I got bread and water. And people say, I'll come in. I can see a crowd. Of, I can see a line running in there. Because there's bread, free bread, free water right here. Come on, come on in. Take it for free. Come on. It's easy. It's right in front of you. All you got to do is, you got to gotta take three steps and reach your arm out and you're there. And every, you know, maybe a couple hours you see one man or one woman say, you know what, wisdom, I'll, I'll take your offer on that. I'll come and join you and your family for a nice meal. For a nice meal. You know? But how, full, how, much, how much smarter are we in our daily lives? You know, we'll choose, we'll choose TV. We'll choose YouTube over Bible time. You know, we'll choose, we'll choose, you know, just playing a game over, you know, prayer. Not even be necessarily bad things. We might choose, you know, uh, oh, um, rather than go visiting, I'm going to, you know, attend my, you know, att attend a birthday party. You know, that's not a bad thing. That's not something wrong or wicked or, you know, not that watching videos is, but it may be something good for you. And maybe I'm going to exercise instead of, instead of making that early prayer meeting. You know, I, I, instead of, uh, you know, I'm going to start learning a new language instead of, um, you know, talking to God. You know, it, it's not necessarily something, it's not like I'm going to sin instead of serving God. It's just other things, you know, the things of this world. It's good to learn other things, but, you know, if all you're doing is nibbling at that bread and water, you're not going down to the feast. If you're not, if you're not putting in any work, you're just, you're just being lazy. If you're just putting off doing what you're supposed to, you're not better than any of these people who are rushing into your house to get some of that free bread and water when you could be down the street you know, having Thanksgiving meal every day, having a Thanksgiving meal every day. So, whether you realize it or not, you're choosing in your heart right now who you're going to go with. If you say, I'll put it off, I'll start reading my Bible next, you know, ne tomorrow, tomorrow morning, or next week, or next month, or, you know what, it's only two months, you know, only two months until the end of the year. I'll just start reading my Bible on January 1st, New Year, New Me. I'll, I'll stop sinning, you know, I'll, I'll stop saying bad words, you know, I'll stop doing, you know, whatever you struggle with. You'll say, I'll, I'll put that off, I'll, I'll, New Year, New Me, you know, it's a fresh start. I could say, I'm just going to stop. I think any human knows very well, you're fooling yourself. To, now is the accepted time, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to say, you know, I'm going to choose life over death. I'm going to go, I'm going to get, yeah, yeah, it's a dirt path. Yeah, it's hard to, there's some rocks in the road. Yeah, the straight and narrow is not easy. But the payouts are so far in between, it's not even funny. You choose today. Choose you this day who you will, whom you will serve. The world, the lust of the flesh, the easy choice. The bread and water on the table, or are you going to choose the feast down the road? Are you going to choose the eternal blessings of God? Are you going to choose something that lasts? Are you going to choose something with your life that really is going to matter in the long run? Today, dinner decisions. Where are you going to eat?